you very much, Philip. It always the pace of that, you know, we have to uh, move it, but it's exhausting. Uh, are there, I don't know if we should have any questions now. Is anybody any comments, any questions about Philip's writing, his project? Please tell us. Um, how did you get the idea, or what, what was the inspiration for so the question was, how did you get the idea? What was the inspiration? Yeah, um, um, there was, um, at, I think it was um, at the end uh, or beginning of 2013, and there was a symposium on, on money, which was organized by a um, um, very important Austrian uh, literature magazine. And they invited me to, to write something about money. So. Wow, okay. <laughs> so I, I kind of, uh, you know, it was winter and I, I, t I had my, uh, I have this apartment with just a wooden oven and I, it was very romantic, so I completely uh, closed, I was kind of really isolated, closed up, and was reading lots of literature about theory of money and about these things. And, and then I, I came to one, phenomenon I, I like I found something that like um, you know in Austria we had um, shilling this was this was the currency before we changed to to the euro and I found out that um, what they did when they um, changed the currency system uh, was that they like destroyed they they gathered the whole currency the whole like at least the banknotes and they I don't know if, if the word is the same, like shredded, like they shredded it, and then they packed it and they start to uh, sell it to um, um, construction companies. So, <laughs> and they used it to uh, fill walls, you know? So I, I had this imagination of all this money, all, all this old money, like, like whispering inside the walls. And yeah, but th this didn't, get me so like far so I I was uh, I did some more research on this process of destroying money and finally I stumbled over this incredible story of Malachit and this place where the whole uh, currency of the German Democratic Republic was stored to decompose yeah Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I and the whole story ends in the idea of total um, um, arbitra arbitrarity. Is there a word like that? Like everything can be, you know, in the world of in a financial world, everything can be exchange through everything because everything can be counted everything can be made uh, a number and so in some way it's completely arbitrary like uh, to have um, to have this amphispaina at, at the end which is the last word so like the last sentence is um, everything you know I was not able to uh, to uh, tell the difference uh, between myself and my uh, and so on and like everything every word like all significance stops and Amphispaina is actually a serpent which has um, two it's a, it's a um, um, uh, mythological um, creature like a serpent with two heads on both ends so it's kind of um, for me it's kind of a symbol of this randomness uh, and yeah, but on the other hand, it's really random that this is the word. It's just a word that sounds very well. I think on Malachit is uh, is the um, how would you say um, the assumed name of this Nazi project of this system of tunnels which was built by um, 
um, by the um, concentration camp prisoners of um, Langenstein zwie Berge. There were thousands who built them, who, who built a system of tunnels which should, which should be there to, to have like a, a kind of um, a place to construct uh, weapons and uh, and airplanes under the earth, so that it's it's hidden and protected from from um, from the allies like bombing it. And and they had this code name or this uh, assumed name, which was Malachit. Right. Um, thank you so much. This was so beautiful to listen to, and I really hope I can have an audio copy uh, for later mm -hmm. use. Um, I just thought well, maybe uh, you and Barbara could ruminate a little bit about the translation process and kind of moments of discussion or things that came up or how you achieved your working rhythm together, or any just anecdotes or details about what that was like to be working together um, in the production of, of the translation on screen. Actually, I came in on this process very late, so two days ago, <laughs> 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 to be honest. But, and Barbara already did an enormous work, so, and, and I was just here to, like, work on details and you know and then we ended up like sitting there the last two days for hours and hours and hours like uh, like the yeah I think it was nine hours all together and we were working really hard and concentrated on the rhythm and on how this could all these, I mean, this is horrible to translate, like sentences that have like almost half a page. And in German this works perfectly, but in English this is really hard. <laughs> and, and the other thing, which was really, or, so, or I just um, tell that, that um, there's a word in German which is really central for this, um, for this text, which is um, Schein. Uh, in German there's this word, this word shine, and it has three major meanings. One is banknote, the other is illusion, and the other is light, like in sunshine, which is the only one which is the same in English. And, I, and my whole text works with this, uh, you know, with this uh, interaction of these meanings, which are not random in German, because there is like uh, a strong, bondage or I don't know how to put it like between uh, illusion and money especially like um, um, uh, like fiat money or or, um, or these banknotes which are like just bare material but without any value actually so the value we put into it is just an illusion in some way so and in German we have this um, this and uh, this one word and the whole text works with this uh, plays with this um, arbitrarity or with this um, multi-dimensional word and so this was really really hard and we were kind of really but maybe you want to say something about that well, I, I, can, I can say that after the seventh hour I turned to Philip and said the next time you write can you write shorter sentences <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean it was it was an amazing experience, actually, because to be able to sit with the author and his insistence, really, on, on a certain rhythm in the text, where I would draw a word like that, you know, and then him pointing to that and saying, no, this needs to be in the text because it doesn't reproduce the rhythm or the repetitions. So there were things that he was attuned to. I think that my, my text would, would have been a little flatter, to be honest flat, to be honest, in certain parts, because um, when I was reading it, I mean, I, I read it actually kind of with my own body and with my own rhythm, mm -hmm. so I may have been bringing something else to the text, and then with him sitting next to me and then reciting the text in his rhythm, you know, it, it gave it a whole different texture. And I know that, you know, we did struggle over, uh, over certain words, you know, that, um, I think that we were able to 
um, unpack a little bit and find an English translation for just to keep that, that metaphor going. But it was funny, as, as he was reading, of course, I was watching the text and thinking, oh my God, we have to change that word, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was a wonderful experience, I have to say. Thank you so much, and I'm so glad that you came back to the cadence. And uh, I teach black women's literature, and listening to you read it, it was so lyrical in that very similar vein, which goes back to the sort of um, rhythm that you guys had to come to. Thank you for translating, it's beautiful. Um, I'm curious because the characters were so uh, evocative and hearing you read the story is almost, you almost pulled us into a lull. It was uh, soothing to read about something so dark in a weird way, if I can say that. Um, how did you develop the characters? I know you talked about the framework, the scaffolding of the story, but um, what was it that, uh, brought you Lola and Finn, and this connection between the contemporary struggles with, you know, um, sexual object objectification of people and drugs, and then with the old as well. Whew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm able to answer your question. Um, um, Hmm. Yeah, it really makes me <laughs> stutter now. Um, um, could you like narrow it down a bit, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> um, when you're sitting there at your desk, how does Lola's voice come to you? Then? Because Lola is, I mean, just hearing you read 30 minutes, um, you know, I could read more, I'm wanting to hear more. Um, and it just seems this connection between the past and present mingled in her voice, um, mm. these agonies almost. Mm. Um, you talked about how you found the narrative for the monies. Yeah. How did her voice come to you or the characterization? Because yeah. it's wonderful. So. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is really much harder to to answer because there's I guess a lot of things happening which I which I not know by myself so this this just you know and it, I, I think you can feel it that it kind of came over me and I mean of course I, I have some framework to that and I have some uh, ideas about like the, um, like the, the contradiction between them and like they have this amazing uh, story or this, uh, this, this childhood experience together going down this, this t tunnel system and getting like this is kind of a, like a horror story and, and, and entering history and ent entering like the unconscious like this is a whole metaphor of unconsciousness and finding like I mean like the most horrible things imagined and, and, and like and for and for children like the most wonderful like uh, finding a treasure this is so playful and, and then and then when they realize when they w what what they actually found this is and, and where they are this is so like a horrible um, I don't know like a, hor a hor horrible experience that really marked them that really like they were never again the, able to to let it go so like um, uh, and so like both of them were determined in their whole uh, life story by this actually experience and they had it in two completely different ways to cope with that like Finn who really tries to get rid of this money by really destroying it by doing some work with his hands by like mm -hmm. going to the, the material material mm, mm, I don't know how to pronounce that word but like to the material to the matter to uh, and this and this aspect of money and and kind of getting rid of this uh, of this shock by just going on and on like to, to destroy this 
uh, money and, and, and Lola is really heading towards the sky. So she's getting into this very contemporary and collective way of financial psychosis, as I would call it. So to kind of escape upward and um, yeah, and um, I don't, yeah, that's ho hopefully some kind of answer. <laughs> I'm going to invite you to please, if you have any other questions, to talk with Philip during the uh, reception so that we can move on with our program. But uh, please join me again in thanking Philip for the